Hi, horse people. I'm Matthew Dispa from Holistic Horsemanship, and I'm all about hoofs and horses. Today, we're going to be talking about horses, starting with our first video of the series Horses Made Simple. Now, I decided to title it this way, uh, not because what we're going to talk about is necessarily super easy. I don't have a magical formula. I don't have a magical recipe to make everything nice and smooth. Um, the reason why I call it simple is because I want to take something that is complex, horsemanship, and turn it into something as simple as possible. So it is then accessible and understandable by as many people as possible. I think the horse world has changed over the last 50, 60 years. We went from horses traditionally owned by families that had gathered sometimes over generations and generations, knowledge and experience about horses through breeding or training. Now, um, we are facing a different situation with uh, more and more people having access to these beautiful animals. And I believe it's a good thing. I think it's an amazing thing to be able to build a relationship to our horses. But it can have sometimes some uh, unwanted consequences. The first one is that um, some people might find themselves in a difficult situation because they don't know how to handle uh, horses. They don't know how to handle um, a certain situation, certain problems when they arise. And the second consequence is that uh, some horses find themselves in the hands of people that don't know what they're doing. And that's okay not knowing um, as long as um, you, 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 you learn and you make things better little by little. And this is the aim of these videos. We're going to be talking about horsemanship and how to build a beautiful, respectful, trustful relationship to your horse. My aim here is to help people helping their horse. So I hope you're excited and let's dive straight into it. Let's get started. In order to build a, a healthy relationship, it doesn't matter if it's between two humans or a human and a horse, the most important element is communication. In order to communicate in a balanced, healthy, clear way with your horse, the first step is actually to be able to learn his language. We're not gonna try to teach our language to horses. What we're gonna do is to learn or relearn the language that horses use between themselves. And that language is very clear, very simple, very straightforward, and is based on energy and body language. Uh, horses uh, are uh, highly social animals. They've evolved over 55 million years uh, in groups and they are actually extremely efficient at communicating between the members of that group. Horses, when you observe them in large groups on open spaces, uh, spend their time usually doing two things, two main things. The first one is to move together. The second one is to move each other. So we have the movement of one big body of horses, the herd, and then we have the individual members of the herd moving each other within the group. One very important thing to be aware of is that horses spend most of their time in a state of peace and harmony. We usually think of horses as these big, strong, fast and scared animals that spook or get afraid easily, but most of the time when you see horses together grazing on a sunny afternoon in a beautiful pasture, they are actually calm, relaxed, in the safety of the group. Now from time to time something happens and horses are triggered. So then you can see that they go from a relaxed, calm state of mind into a, a nervous or active uh, state of mind. That is usually when something happens, it can be a real threat like a predator or it can be just a potential danger, a branch cracking, a move that they see, a sound that they hear or a scent that they smell. And that will bring the whole group of horses to actually move together putting a safe distance between themselves and the potential danger. As you can see it on this footage, it is very clear that the horses that were relaxed and calm are now agitated and nervous. 
ears are pointing forward, their speed is increased and you can see that it's the whole herd that is moving as one body and then the individuals are moving within the herd. Their behavior is now completely different. They went from moving very little, grazing peacefully, to now being quite agitated, figuring out what to do with that new situation that they are facing. It is very clear that the horses within the herd are communicating in order to organize themselves. And as you can see here, they can be quite confused at times. Some horses are going one way, other horses are coming in and push the first ones away and then they start moving all together. That body language that the horses used is actually an extremely efficient way to organize the whole group in moving safely. It might at first look a little bit aggressive because you get these spin ears and this movement of the body, but actually that communication allows horses to organize the space around them so in the end no one gets injured. A horse in the wild being injured will mean uh, the death of that horse. So it's actually very rare to see horses hitting or injuring other horses. It usually happens in different circumstances when they are confined or where they are not used to be socialized. On open spaces, horses will interact with each other constantly, moving each other, claiming space, asking other horses to go forward out of their space, but you will very rarely see actual aggression and actual wounds being inflicted by one horse to another. And then as soon as they find an open space, you can see the whole group taking off in the distance, basically covering a certain distance until they will find safety again. And then they will go back to calmness, peace, usually grazing, or if they feel very safe, sleep. After seeing these two extremes, the one where the horses are very calm and the other one where they are running away from a danger, here you can see how the herd can be moving pretty calmly and still checking out the environment. I think that the day that footage was taken, some work had been done with a bulldozer and then the horses were actually finding out that their environment had been modified. You can see them there sniffing the ground, curious, alert but not too much, not scared. And you can see that little by little they find their way to the pond that you see in the distance and then further on the ranch. So that is basically the herd moving calmly from one place to the other. From the observation of this footage, I hope it is becoming quite clear that what a calm horse looks like what a horse that is quite nervous look like and then every possibility in between. Here we have the case of a very basic movement and very basic communication from one horse to the other. You can clearly see how one horse will come towards another, pushing that horse forward or let's say claiming the space in front of them with a very clear facial expression, a very clear body language, usually some speed, some energy into their body and uh, very clearly as well you're gonna see the other horse yielding that space and allowing that horse that was claiming the space to move in. That means that horses actually use the mechanism of pressure followed by release in order to obtain something from another horse. Very often you're gonna see a few early signs like a look, like a pin of the ear, like a certain movement of the neck. If the horse that is being the target of that behavior is not moving or reading the signals, the pressure will usually increase, so then there will be a movement of the whole body of the horse, there will be maybe a lowering of the head and a pretty aggressive facial expression, until the moment, which you're gonna see a little bit later in the footage, where uh, an actual bite or an actual move might happen until um, the problem is solved, the horses are very quick and efficient at solving problems, 
one or the other horse will actually yield the space to another horse. So we're gonna get back to that very important concept of increasing pressure followed by instant release. It's a mechanism that horses naturally use and that we can use as well in order to make ourselves understood by horses. Now, of course, another thing that is very interesting to observe is how horses interact when they are in a space that is not open anymore. Here you can see a whole group of horses that is basically fenced in a paddock, so their space is limited, and then the number of interaction between them is going to become way more concentrated, and then it becomes obvious that when it comes to organizing who's gonna drink first and who's gonna eat first, horses are gonna use their language, horse language, in order to organize themselves. So very clearly observe how these horses are moving, how they are interacting with each other, and then you will figure out that just with that body language and the energy they put in the way they move their body, horses very efficiently organize themselves and organize their social life. But horse life is not only about survival, about water, food or running away from predators. Horse life can be about playing and having fun. You can see here these two young horses interacting with each other just for the fun of it. And this is going to be a very important element inspiring us for the way we are going to interact with horses in uh, something that would take the shape of a game or a dance where both partners feel safe and communicate with each other with respect and trust. That's it guys for this first video of the series Horses Made Simple. I hope you find it useful, I hope you find it interesting. Let me know in the comments below, like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one uh, where we're going to be talking hoops and horses once again. Take good care, see you next time.